Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Downey and today we are going to be looking at different steroids and assessing which of them are safer for your cardiovascular system and which might be more harmful. So as you guys know, I always like to discuss relevant research before I get into the nitty gritty entertaining part. But hopefully it will be entertaining enough to keep your guys' attention until the end where we discuss which are safe and which aren't. And obviously when I say safe, nothing is truly safe and none of this is medical advice, but we're just going to look at interesting research I came across. So for those of you who are interested, I've started a Patreon, and the reason for this is because I'd like to spend more time researching around anabolic steroids and producing content and I'd really appreciate the support. If you are a member on my Patreon I will start doing Q&As just for you guys on this channel, preferably weekly but if I don't get enough questions then I'll do it monthly. So let's get on with the nitty gritty details. So I'd previously made a video where I hypothesized that there's some interaction between steroids and mineralocorticoids. Mineralocorticoids include the most well-known one being aldosterone and they stimulate the mineralocorticoid receptor. So a subscriber shared this study with me that I found interesting because it supported my hypothesis around the interaction of steroids and mineralocorticoids. Now, it's important to note that steroids do not stimulate the mineralocorticoid receptor, although the androgen receptor is quite similar to the mineralocorticoid receptor. But this paper that was shared with me demonstrates an indirect effect that steroids have on the mineralocorticoid receptor and it's through this enzyme called 11-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase 2. Now that's a long name, but essentially this enzyme is important for converting cortisol into its inactive cortisone. And the problem is if cortisol isn't converted into cortisone, you have higher levels of circulating cortisol. Now we know that steroids do inhibit the action of cortisol on muscle tissue, but this doesn't mean that it inhibits its action elsewhere. And it is demonstrated that in cases where this enzyme 11-BHSD2 is antagonized, there seems to be an increase in stimulation of the mineralocorticoid receptor by glucocorticoids or cortisol. So 11-BHSD2, the enzyme we're talking about in this video, and the MR, or mineralocorticoid receptor, are found in the atria, ventricles, endothelial, as well as smooth muscle cells in the cardiovascular system. And it's been shown that by inhibition of this enzyme, there is an increase of cortisol-induced MR activation. And what happens then is that it stimulates inflammation, promotes atherosclerosis, and leads to severe hypertension. So now that we know that steroids don't really interact with the MR or aldosterone, how does it affect this enzyme 11-BHSD2? Well, the study looked at that, and it looked at a variety of different hormones, or anabolic steroids, and what its effects were on this enzyme. They compared it to a positive control, which is glyretinic acid, which is found in licorice, which is known to be a potent 11-BHSD2 inhibitor. And what they found was pretty interesting. The steroid fluoxymesterone, or halotestin, I'm probably saying it wrong, I'm not so great at pronouncing things, was found to inhibit this enzyme more than the positive control. And when compared to testosterone, testosterone and oxymethylone, or anadrol, seem to have moderate inhibitory effects on this enzyme as well. And if we look at the activity compared to the concentration of fluoxymesterone and testosterone, we can see that halotestin is 
far more inhibitory than testosterone. That being said though, testosterone still has an effect on this enzyme and this effect increases as the dose increases. So that would mean that if you were to use higher doses of testosterone, whilst it only causes moderate inhibition at higher doses, it could completely ablate the activity of this enzyme. The researchers found these results quite interesting, so they decided to see how halotestin interacts at a molecular level with 11-BHSD2. And it actually anchored to this enzyme at the binding spot with four hydrogen bonds and, and antagonized the effect that 11-beta-HSD2 had on cortisol. Remember that this enzyme converts cortisol to cortisone, its inactive component. But as I'm sure most of you watching this want to know, did any steroids not really have an effect on this enzyme? And the answer is, there were some. However, they didn't look at every steroid under the sun, unfortunately, but they found that methenolone or primabolin had no inhibitory effects on this enzyme. Also, the steroid known as norbolethone, or I think it was the clear, which was taken by athletes as it was undetectable at one point or not looked for, also didn't inhibit this enzyme. So what are the implications of these results? Well, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, decreased activity of this enzyme leads to vasoconstriction, the vessels becoming tighter, which can elevate blood pressure, and this isn't only caused by stimulation of the mineralocorticoid receptor, but also the glucocorticoid receptor. Furthermore, it's known that inhibition of this enzyme in vascular smooth muscle cells and endothelial cells causes paracrine activation of MR receptors in cardiomyocytes, or essentially heart muscle cells. And this leads to remodeling of the heart, which can cause things like left ventricular hypertrophy, which I'm sure you all know about. But not only that, when we look at inhibition of this enzyme in mice that have high cholesterol levels or are predisposed to atherosclerosis or plaques, the inhibition of this enzyme aggravated the promotion of atherosclerosis and caused atherosclerosis to build up more quickly in the mice that had inhibition of this enzyme. And the reason that's important is because we know that steroid users tend to have skewing of their lipids, such as an increase in LDL and a decrease in HDL, which could cause progression of atherosclerosis. So the reason I think this is important is because even in the absence of high blood pressure, which as we know is an important risk factor for developing cardiovascular disease, it would still mean that you could develop cardiovascular issues, and the reason for that is through stimulation of the mineralocorticoid receptor. So then if we had to classify steroids using this categorization of whether it inhibits or doesn't inhibit 11-beta-HSD2, halotestin would be the most harmful steroid in this case, with testosterone and anadrol being moderately harmful, and something like Primo nor Bolithone being safer. So whilst a lot of this is just in vitro and doesn't necessarily mean it's going to correlate clinically, we do have a lot of data that suggests anabolic steroid users are at risk of cardiovascular disease. And in a recent study published in Finland that I'm going to cover in another video, it demonstrates that even when you control for blood pressure, steroid users still had a higher prevalence of left ventricular hypertrophy and other adverse cardiovascular outcomes. This is essentially the reason why I looked into mineralocorticoids. So is there anything you can do to prevent activation of the mineralocorticoid receptor? Well, there are drugs that antagonize this receptor. However, they come with a lot of side effects and I am in no way suggesting you use them. However, I would consider discussing the use of them with your healthcare provider, especially if you are on higher doses of steroids or if you are known to have established cardiovascular disease. 
And these two drugs are spironolactone or eplerinone. Now, eplerinone is the more selective compound. And the reason I say selective is because spironolactone not only binds to mineralocorticoid receptors, but also can target androgen receptors and stimulate progesterone receptors. And this leads to side effects that are well demonstrated with spironolactone, such as gynecomastia, a decrease in libido. And so eplerinone was designed to be more selective for the mineralocorticoid receptor. Now, the reason I'm sharing this is not to suggest that you use these drugs because there are a lot of side effects, but I would discuss them with your healthcare provider as we don't have a lot of information on harm reduction in steroid users. So we kind of have to hypothesize ways of preventing these adverse health outcomes. So that is it for the video. I apologize to those who only came to watch the video to find out which steroid is safer, but I just thought I'd share this information with you as knowledge and education is important. If you like this video or have any comments, please let me know and I will see you guys in the next video.